Hello everyone, Mike here from Steel Green Manufacturing and today we're going to review calibrating your equipment. In particular we're going to be using this SG46 here but you can also use these methods on other equipment. Now let's get started. There's going to be three key items that you're going to need to know to calibrate your equipment. Number one is going to be swath width, number two is going to be speed of the equipment, and number three is going to be the output of the nozzles. So we'll start with swath width. To get your swath width, all you're going to do is take your nozzle spacing times your number of nozzles. So if you look at this machine here, it's got four nozzles, two in the center and one on each wing, and they're spaced at 20 inches apart. That's gonna give us 20 inches times four nozzles is 80 inches. Divide that by 12 and you come up with 6.7 feet. So now we know our swath width. Next, we need to find out the output of these nozzles. In order to do that, we're gonna to need to first ensure that the equipment is clean, the nozzles are clean, and the main filter housing is clean. So to do that, I'm gonna grab a bucket of water and we're gonna pull this tip off and clean it out. Just takes a quarter turn. You could pull that off of there. Your screen should come out, no problem. If it does not, you could just, you normally tap on it and it'll fall out. Or say if you just had water in the system, you could just flip the pump switch on, kick the pump on, and your screen will pop right out for you. So what we're gonna do with our nozzle here is we're going to take our bucket of water, we can drop it right in there, clean it around. You're gonna to wanna to be very careful with this because there is a metered orifice size and you're not going to want to stick anything harsh into that. You're just going to want to rinse it out or brush it lightly. If you mess that up, then your nozzle is going to be putting out far too much or far too little because you've uh, obstructed it. The screen itself has a check ball inside. So same thing there. You drop it in your water, you get it out, and you just take your toothbrush and brush that screen, get it all clean, rinse it off again. Now, I mentioned the check ball inside. If it ever wants to stick to where it's not allowing the nozzle spray, you could easily just tap it on a metal surface and get it to break loose. If not, just simply replace the screen. I'm gonna put these nozzles back on and then we'll step around back We'll step around back of the equipment and check the main filter housing. Okay, so the main filter housing on all of our equipment is going to be right here by your left leg as you stand on the machine. First thing you're going to want to do is take this valve and turn it to the off position. And that will prevent any excess chemical from draining out when you remove this cap. Now we'll go ahead and loosen this. Drop it out and we can remove this 50 mesh screen and brush it out, clean it out, and make sure it's all ready to go. Pop it back in. We'll also want to ensure this O-ring is intact and in good condition on the cap, or you may have a different type of flat rubber gasket. Just depends on what machine you're working on. Um, if you're missing that, it's going to suck air and it's not going to be able to pull prime or build pressure when you go to turn the pump on. Now we can just put this cap right back in and tighten it. Make sure the plug on bottom is tight and open your valve back up. And now we're ready to test spray. Okay, now we're gonna fire up the machine and get the boom spraying so that we can have the nozzles all spraying at 40 PSI at the same time. That way I can catch each nozzle. I'm only gonna show you on the first outside nozzle but you would wanna repeat this process for all of them. Now you may ask, why would I wanna do that? There's a chart already that the, ma the nozzle manufacturer makes that tells me how much these are putting out. Well, you could find yourself putting out more than what that chart says, and what that's gonna tell you is you need to replace that nozzle. If you're seeing any difference also between the nozzles of five to 10%, you should replace that nozzle. So I'm gonna hop back here and get it running and get everything spraying properly. Okay, 
now I have everything set up. When I turn that pump back on, it's gonna be spraying 40 pounds of pressure, and I'll have an assistant off camera that's gonna time me for 30 seconds while I catch this nozzle. So I'm gonna need a measuring pitcher. Alright, it was 30 seconds. So let's see what we got here. Looks like we're coming in right at 16 ounces, which is actually spot on, which it should be. This is being a brand new machine, brand new nozzles. If I were to look at the chart, 40 pounds of pressure, in 30 seconds I should get 16 ounces. Now we're going to see how long it takes to cover a thousand square feet. To do that, we're going to take the swap width of the machine, which is 6.7 feet. We'll take a thousand divide that by 6.7 which will put us at 149 and a quarter so we'll round up to 150 feet i'll take my measuring wheel we're going to mark out 150 feet and utilize two buckets to signify the start and finish lines we'll get the machine started up and i'll set the bar on it to five mile an hour we'll make sure i'm driving five mile an hour before i hit the start line and i'll have my assistant time me okay now i'm gonna take my measuring wheel i'm gonna walk off 150 feet We'll drop a bucket down there. Okay, now I'm ready to see how long it takes to go 150 feet. I've already got the machine set at five mile an hour. I did that already. So I'll fire it up and we'll run down the track. Okay, so it took us 21 seconds flat to go 150 feet on this machine with the speed bar set at five mile an hour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that 150 feet and divide that by the time, 21 seconds. That's gonna give us an answer of 7.14. And I happen to know that the standard for one mile an hour in feet per second is 1.47. So we'll take the 7.14 and divide that by the 1.47, which will give us an answer of 4.85 mile an hour. So we're right on track with that five mile an hour mark, which is what we're after. Okay, so now we're going to take the information that we gathered here today, and I'm going to show you how to use that information to properly mix your tanks and ensure you're putting down the right amount of product per thousand square feet. So starting off in step one, we'll take a total boom output, which was 64 ounces, and we're going to divide that by 30 seconds to figure out how many ounces per second we're actually putting out. So that's gonna give us a, the answer of 2.13 ounces per second in step two. And now we need to figure out how many ounces we're putting out in a thousand square feet. So we take the 2.13 ounces and times it by the 21 seconds it took us to cover that pre-measured area of a thousand square feet which is gonna give us the answer there in step three of 44.73 ounces per thousand square feet is what our boom is applying. So it's, you're also going to wanna to know um, the gallons per thousand square feet. So to, to get that information, you just take in step four, the 44.73 ounces and divide that by 128 ounces, which is a gallon. And that's gonna give you 0.35 gallons per thousand square feet okay so now i'm going to go over how we're going to use this information to properly mix say a 30 gallon tank of chemical so starting off in step one we have a 30 30 gallon tank capacity and we need to divide that 
by our, our booms output, which is the 0.35 gallons per thousand square feet. When you, when you do that, you're going to get 85.71. So that's, that means that our 30 gallon tank will cover 85,710 square feet. Or you could look at it as 85.71, 1,000 square foot areas. So say we have a product that calls for 1.5 ounces per thousand square feet. What we would do is we would take the, in step two, the 85.71 and times that by that 1.5 ounces because every one of those 85.71 areas need the 1.5 ounces of product to be at the proper application rate. And that's gonna get you 128 ounces that you're gonna to wanna to mix into each 30 gallon tank that you have on your machine. Now, one other thing I wanna go over real quick is say that wasn't quite enough, the 0.35 gallons per thousand square feet that we were getting out of the boom earlier. The easiest way to change that is probably going to be by either speed or changing the nozzle size. So if you slow down, that will increase your rate. Or if you go up in a nozzle size, that's going to increase your rate. Now, increasing your pressure could also do that, but I really wouldn't recommend going much over 40 because the higher you drive that pressure, most times you're going to get a finer droplet size and you're going to get more drift. So really, I would stay in that 30 to 40 PSI range is what we always recommend. So if you, if you want more than the 0.35, just go to a bigger nozzle size or just slow your machine down and you can recalibrate until you get the proper output that you're looking for. Thank you for joining us today on this video of how to calibrate your spray rig. And make sure you follow us on social media or visit our website, which is steelgreenmfg.com.